Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends and foes. It's time for a TAT, and I got some good stuff to talk about today. And as soon as I come back, I'll get started. Hey! Oh, Rocket Chick Rogers. Hello there. Okay, so I have quite a few things here that I want to talk about today. I've got a few things that some of you probably won't like. I'm sure the haters are going to come out immediately and talk about a couple of these topics here that I want to talk about. Uh, Airbnb. Okay, Airbnb. I don't know many of you that have met me in person, that have met me in person and know me personally, know how I feel about Airbnb. And I'm going to tell you right now, without a moment's hesitation, that I have absolutely zero use for Airbnb. I don't like them. I don't like the way they operate. I don't like their quality control. I, I have no use for them. I've had bad experiences with them. Even back home in the States, I had a neighbor that rented to Airbnb and they were they were supposed to screen all their renters, their clients to make sure they were over the age of 55 because I live in a 55 and older community and they were supposed to screen them for their age and not allow basically kids into our community and we it was a nightmare for a lot of us, me and a lot of people and nobody at Airbnb would do a damn thing about it. I've had two bad experiences here. One was, both of them were just with just, you know, not meeting expectations. When you look at a site, a rental site on their website, and they show you a list of all the amenities of what's available for this rental, and you expect that to be there. Coffee, check. Okay, I want coffee. Fresh water, check. Yeah, okay, I want fresh water. Clean towels, clean linens, you know. I showed up at the first place I went to that was in Crescita and TV was broken. The, the, the bathroom sink almost came off the wall when I leaned over on it to brush my teeth. There was nothing, to, there was no drinking water. No, I'm sorry, I'll take it back. There was drinking water, but in this one there was no, there was coffee and there was a coffee maker, but no coffee pot. Okay, it didn't meet our expectations and we canceled and the poor lady told me that she you know, she, she inherited the place from her husband who deceased, who passed away a year earlier, and she asked me if I even wanted to buy the place. And I just said, nope, I just want out. I got a refund for the balance of the month that I was going to be there, and we came on to Monta. Got into one here in Monta, and it was even worse. I'm not going to go into details about it. It's, it's no sense in, you know, hashing it over. If you want to know the problems that I had with that one, Send me, well, no, don't even do that, because I'm not, it, it, let me tell you, it just didn't meet expectations at all. But the worst part about the one here in Monta was that the lady completely canceled my reservation, and even after I, me and my two guests stayed overnight, she refunded 100% of my money, and so I gave her a positive review, a good review, and yet she tore me up on her review of me. After I went to, when I tried to go to Quinkin the first of the year, I had the, the first place I tried to get into, they turned me down and said they didn't want any trouble. Fortunately, the second one accepted me and didn't have a problem. I don't like Airbnb. I don't like the way they treat people. I don't like the way they, they don't police their clients. I have people that came to Monta to get, to rent an Airbnb and they end up in a box with no windows. I had one couple that came here, they had the, the female half of the couple was was disabled and had to walk with a cane and she had to walk up two flights of skinny little concrete stairs with no handrails to get to the apartment and it was 100% dangerous for her. You know, they didn't say anything about that in the description. Airbnb, you can take a hike as far as I'm concerned and I, I know that I, I said that on a million JP's channel one time and JP got all snippy about it and told me not to be bad mouthing Airbnb. Well, So that's how I feel about Airbnb. Please, folks, as much as I want to help you, I, I really, really want to help people, but please don't write to me and ask me for any information about Airbnb here in Montu. Because as far as I'm concerned, they all suck. If somebody can show me one that doesn't, I'm all ears. 
Funerals. I want to talk to you about funerals. You can see from the picture here, this is a funeral procession that just went right by my apartment here today. Normally when I see this uh, funeral procession like this one, there is extremely loud music that precedes them, the crowd. But this one here was dead silent. I don't know how I managed to even know they were there. It turns out that the person that was being buried is the TV reporter that was assassinated here earlier in the week. And I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes when I'm going to talk about murders here in Monta. When you see these funerals, the, these funeral possessions, they are, they're out in the open street. They're, they carry the, the coffin over their shoulders, as you can see from the picture here. And it's, to me, it's very moving, you know, and uh, the people show their love, you know, right to the last minute. I was reading in the Quinka High Life today, and I read something about how the airline are rebounding. And I'm going to read to you what I made note of. <laughs> I think I'm going to read it to you. It seems like you know the, the airline travel industry, the airline industry is, is rebounding uh, with a vengeance. There are more flights coming in. Oh, I can't believe this. I had this. I had notes on this. And according to the what I read, I'll just Ecuador air travel rebounds from the pandemic. So I'll put a link to in the, in the description to this article. It's of uh, the number of national and international air passengers arriving at Ecuador's airports is showing a strong recovery from the COVID-19. Pandemic. According to the National Civil Aviation Agency, the number of passengers through the first six months of 2022 was 78% the number of the passengers in the same period of 2019. So, that's good news. Travel is up. People are coming in. I know somebody's going to write and ask me, what about COVID? Do your own research on COVID. I'm not the COVID expert here. I hear people, they, you can get in here, you don't have to have you don't have to show a vax card anymore. You don't have to be vaccinated, I don't guess, to get in here. I don't know. The best advice I can give you, or no, the best, I don't give advice. The best recommendation I can give you in regards to getting information about COVID is check with your airline, okay? That's all there is to it. Check with your airline and get it straight from, get the straight scoop from the source, okay? Not hearsay from somebody like me or somebody on Facebook, okay? Get it from the airline. Marijuana wall laws. Marijuana walls. Marijuana laws in Ecuador. They say that you can have, you can possess marijuana up to 10 grams. That that's been decriminalized. There's been a lot of talk lately about marijuana, as you may have watched from one of my previous videos. For those of you that watch my videos to the end, a lot of you don't realize that. Usually at the end of my videos, I have a little clip of something, a little bonus clip. You know, you never know what it's going to be. It might be a TikTok clip. It might be a blooper from me. It might be me smoking pot. You never know what you're going to see on the end of some of these videos. But I've done a lot of research here lately to find out about the use of marijuana because I talked to my doctor about uh, maybe me using marijuana to help me curb my stress and to help me relax and get to sleep at night because it's a problem for me. I have a problem with stress here like you wouldn't believe. I'm afraid that it's going to cost me my relationship with my girlfriend. I snapped at her the other day to the degree that this makes me sick to my stomach and uh, I don't know what I'm going to do about it. You know, I, I hurt her and I'm so sorry for that. I wish I had, I still wish I had not have snapped at her. And she knows I'm sorry about it. And we, we're we still talking, but I'm, I have got to figure out some way to get this, calm this stress down. I stress over everything. I stress over noise. I stress over getting sleep. I stress over, will I get any sleep tonight? I stress over that. I stress over money in the bank. I stress over this channel. I stress over my girlfriend. <laughs> Am I making her happy? You know, I stress over everything. So I've been looking into this possibility, you know, what if I want to smoke a joint? What if I want to, or take some CBD oil or THC oil, you know? I'm looking into it. So I wanted to see what the information I could find about the legalities of it. And pretty much all I can find out, believe it or not, they decriminalize possessing marijuana up to 10 grams. But 
it's up to the cop that stops you. It's up to the cop. That, and that's what scares me. So if you come to Ecuador and you want to smoke pot and you get caught by a cop, you better get some cash out of your pocket because more than likely you can just probably give the cop 20 bucks and he'll look the other way. That's, that's what I've heard. I, I don't know if that's true. I'm not saying that. But that's what I heard. That's right. It's hearsay. Good old hearsay. This is not the United States. We can use hearsay here. Possession up to 10 grams. All right, so anyway, on to the next topic. American TV. There's a way to get American TV here. I don't know if you've heard about it, but it's called Magis TV. M-A-G-I-S. I get it here in Monta for $10 a month. If you come here and you want to get it for your TV, you need to have a smart TV or a Fire Stick or any other streaming device. And believe it or not, you can get American TV programming. And it works pretty damn good. I used to have another one that I bought when I was signed, or signed up for when I was in Cuenca, and they charged me like $20 a month, and you couldn't give me their service. And if you want to know the name of it, send me an email and I'll tell you. I'm not going to announce it here, but Magis TV here in Cuenca. I found the guy on Facebook advertising. He's a super nice guy. He gives you personal attention if you have any problems, and he'll come out and he'll load it up on your fire stick for you. Basically, jailbreak the fire stick. Just come in the back door so you can load up software on it, and he'll load it up for you. It's 10 bucks a month, and it works really pretty damn good. So it's called Magis TV. I don't have a link for it. Well, maybe I do have a link for it. I do have a link for it. I'll tell you what, I'll put it in the description, okay? I'll check with the guy and make sure that it's okay for me to put it, his information in the description. I'm sure it will be. And, and by the way, he speaks great English, and he'll take care of you, okay? So, American TV. The other thing I want to talk about is, I saw an article in the Quink High Life that said, want to be an expat but can't bring yourself to leave your home country behind entirely. As someone who spent five, spent five or six months in a year, who spent five or six months a year in Cuenca since 2003, I always appreciate the fact that I'm able to see the city with fresh eyes every time I return. This guy took a really great picture. Here it is right here. This looks like my kind of picture. I would, if I was in this area, I would have taken the exact same photograph. The story basically is about giving up everything and coming to another country. It's a, it's a real, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put a link to this article in the description too because the thing that I really wanted to point out uh, about this article is it, it, it made me think about a conversation I had with somebody the other day, and I've talked about this before. When you want to come here, if you're going to sell everything you own, and you have any doubts about whether you think you're going to be happy here or not, just sell the major stuff like maybe your car and your house and stuff like that, but stuff that's near and dear to your heart and that you don't, and maybe furniture and stuff, you know, put it in storage. Put it in storage for a year and then give it a year. I seem to be meeting more and more people that are concerned about that because they hear stories about what it's like being retired here and they're not easy about it. So go ahead and put some stuff in storage. Put your stuff in storage. If you have to turn around and go back home, at least you can go and get your stuff. Even put a car in storage if you don't want to sell it, you know. To tell you the truth, I wish I'd done that. Not that I want to go back, but there's been so many times where I've thought, if I get sick enough, I'd have to go back, and it would be nice to be able to get to my stuff. This guy wrote, particularly to Quinka this year, I'm hearing from several friends that expats are leaving in droves as a result of the COVID pandemic and that the overall expat population is in decline. Say what, he says. From my annual snapshot perspective, I'm baffled that anyone of reasonable observation skills would believe this. I cannot help but notice a substantial year-to-year -year increase of tourists and expats on the streets and restaurants and supermarkets and mercados and at the festivals and concerts. I also can't help but notice an increase of the number of young expat families of European and North American origin. And just last week, I talked to a Chinese lady who facilitates the relocation of Chinese nationals and people of Chinese ancestry in the U.S. to Cuenca. She believes that about 500 Chinese who have moved to Cuenca since 2014. 
True, it's, the pandemic slowed down the flow, but from what I see, things are quickly returning to normal. More and more people are coming to Ecuador, and more and more people are going to Cuenca. Cuenca is a favorite destination here, folks. The guy says, frankly, I don't care if expat numbers are going up or down and would be just as happy with fewer expats. I can be happy with the fewer expats that I know of around here. I could pick some out. I also readily admit that my choice of Cuenca is mostly personal. I try to avoid discussions with, about which expat country or city is the best or better than others. This is mostly a, number, a matter of personal opinion. After all, at my age, I'm not interested in the latest, greatest expat destination that has just been discovered. I quit reading International Living years ago. Yeah, I did too. I quit reading that garbage years ago too. My message to those thinking of becoming expats but have reservations about leaving the old country. Now listen to this, folks. My message to those thinking of becoming expats but have reservations about leaving the old country behind is to consider becoming part-time expats. We love many things about our hometown in California, and we love being able to see our children and our grandchildren on a regular basis. On the other hand, we feel blessed to spend time in Cuenca. By dividing our time between two countries and two cultures, my wife and I feel we enjoy the best of two worlds without leaving either behind. It's a good article. I'll put the link in the description. Read it. It's in Cuenca High Life. It's, you know, talking about the... Now, I want to talk about murder. So, we've had some murders here in Mata recently, and I'm sure you may have heard about them. Uh, I'm going to quote some stuff from Mark Badbury's post on Facebook, on his Facebook page. What's happened is that there have been some shootings. They're actually assassinations. They weren't just random shootings. These were people that were influential people in the area, in the community. One was a TV reporter and that somebody put out a hit on, paid $2,000 to have this guy murdered, and that's the guy that's in the coffin that's being carried down the street here in the start of this video from the picture that I posted. And the other one was a, a woman and her bodyguard, a jewelry store owner, I believe it was. I could be wrong about that, but I'll put a link to Mark Bradbury's article on Facebook, he gives some pretty good details about it, but it wasn't a holdup, it wasn't a robbery, it was an assassination because the woman and her bodyguard both were shot and killed. Mark said in his article, again, it's important that you understand the difference, the difference as to random violence and targeted executions. Lately, with the shootings of a young 26-year-old woman, a female attorney, a jewelry store owner, and her bodyguard, and then yesterday a local television reporter was shot down right in front of his son. Two men were apprehended for that murder and openly admitted that they had been paid $2,000 for killing this man who apparently upset the wrong people. Clearly, murder for hire has become a profitable job, a job where some can make more money for the hit than they could make selling fish or working on cars for the next few months. It's a business and it's pretty damn scary for sure. Mark went on to say, expats who live here are not being gunned down in the streets. Some have experienced random acts of violence which have been traumatic, but acts of crime against the expats here have been the same thing that has been going, happening here for a long time. Telephones being stolen, occasional shakedown, primary problems that we face every day. Not necessarily paradise, but not any more unusual here than major cities all over the world. Crimes of opportunity happen everywhere, and they will continue happening here. It's human nature, and we can't stop it. So I'll put a link to this article and the description. The mayor here has is, is gone to Quito and to ask for help to try to get some more resources to help patrol the streets, especially over this holiday weekend that we have this weekend. You know, but folks, if you hear about these murders, like Mark said, don't, I mean, be concerned. I mean, you have every right to be concerned about them for sure, but know that these random shootings don't happen here like they do in the United States. It's a sport in the United States. It doesn't happen often here. We don't have mass shootings. Usually if there's a shooting here, it's between gang members fighting over drugs. And I don't think you have to worry about anything. If you stay out of the wrong areas, you're going to be okay. It's not just Montes, Cuenca, Quito, Guayaquil. Every city in Ecuador has these problems. Okay? So anyway... That's a wrap for this TAT. I have an interview coming up next Tuesday morning with the guy here 
that teaches Spanish lessons. And he has a classroom setting where he teaches the classes or he teaches one-on-one. I'm going to interview him one-on-one myself, and it should be interesting. I'm going to, I have a lot of questions to ask him about coming here and learning to speak Spanish. So if any of you have any particular questions that you want to know about that, put them in the comments below or send me an email. My email is in the description, dshader644 at gmail.com. Feel free to write and send me your questions, and I'll be sure to include them in my interview with him. Okay? So until then, I will see you next week. Have a good weekend. Be safe. Travel safe. And be healthy, okay? Ciao, ciao. Let me show you something that's really powerful. Can I borrow your phone, please? There's one right there in between you. Just let me borrow that for a sec. I'm asking you to give me somebody else's phone. You don't have to turn it on. I just need it. Thank you. So let me show you the subconscious power of this device. What if I were to hold my phone while I'm giving this presentation? I'm not checking it. It's not buzzing. It's not beeping. I'm simply holding it. Do you feel like you're the most important thing to me right now? No, you do not. And this is an artificial environment. Now think about how often this phone is out while we're talking to other people. Hey, boss, can I talk to you? Sure, what's on your mind? As opposed to, sure, what's on your mind? We go out for dinner or lunch with our family and our friends. We have meetings and we put the phone on the table, which sends a subconscious message to everybody else in the room that this is not that important to me. You're not that important to me. And by the way, putting your phone upside down is not more polite. <laughs> this, is, this is my favorite one, where the phone rings in the middle of a dinner, in the middle of a lunch, in the middle of a meeting, and somebody goes, I'm not going to answer it. <laughs> oh my God, just so magnanimous. <laughs> right? Thank you.